Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble and I am here. Oh, look at me tonight. Uh, first of all, we're going until midnight, okay? Uh, uh, Eastern time. Uh, and we hope you'll join us uh, for our citizens panel, which is coming up in a little bit. Uh, I uh, Look at me. I, I'm wearing a sweater tonight. I thought I'd I went out to dinner tonight, and I, uh, I also I, I decided I want to try a cap I've never worn before. And this one, I think, if I'm not mistaken, was sent to me uh, from the J.J. Hat Center, it says here. And I think this is, is a hat Tony sent me. It, doesn't that make me look like I belong in Florida? Hey, how are you? Welcome to the show. Yeah, right. How's the beard coming along? Is the beard even showing up yet? Oh, well. I don't know. Hey, I'm, I'm thinking of cutting it off. I'm thinking of cutting off the mustache, too. Why not just go for the, whole mo the full Monty? Uh, just give up totally, okay? Uh, but anyway, so um, uh, here we are. Uh, I have no guest tonight. Uh, I will have a guest tomorrow night. I will have a guest on f Thursday. But tonight, I don't have anybody, and that means that I have to blab at you and I have nothing to talk about at all. Well, yes, I do, but I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, so today, why, why am I wearing a sweater tonight? Well, because we went out to dinner tonight. And um, <clears throat> the reason we went out to dinner was that it is our seventh wedding anniversary. I think it's the seventh. I hope it's the seventh. I hope I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'll hear about it. And uh, 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 so we went out to dinner tonight. So, the, you know, a little, our wedding, our wedding dinner. She, she always has, she, I, one day, she finds any excuse to go out for dinner, okay? So, you know, like when it's my birthday, we have to have dinner, go out for dinner. When it's her, I have, there's this little piece of thread right here. Hold on a second. I got to get rid of this. It's driving me crazy. There it is. And it won't cut. Huh. Hmm. There we go. Ah. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> now I got a thread in my mouth somewhere. Boy, this is a gift that just keeps on giving, Tony. Anyway, um, so she um um uh she, she she'll take any excuse. So uh, it says anniversary. Today's the twenty seventh. She made the dinner appointment last week, thinking that was our anniversary. Enough for her complaining about the fact that I don't remember when anniversaries are. Because as you know, we were in a court deposition recently. And the, uh, uh, as part of the deposition, the uh, opponent, uh, attorney, asked me, and uh, what day were you married? And uh, when were you married? And I went, uh, well, I don't, uh, you know, I guess uh, May, March, uh, March, March 20. I, I couldn't name it. And uh, uh, the uh, other attorney, the third attorney, who was a woman at the time, uh, looked over at my wife and went, just like a guy. I can't remember when the anniversary is. So anyway, I never forget the anniversary now. It's the 27th. She thought it was last week. So she made the, made the dinner arrangements for last week. Comes in and he says, you know, we're going out to dinner tomorrow night. I'm, I'm thinking, well, what half-assed reason has she got this time? And she says, it's our anniversary. I said, no, it's next week. I got it on my calendar. And sure enough, on my calendar, which she had sent an invitation to a long time ago, it says wedding anniversary. So she went, oh, okay. And she had to remake it for tonight. Um, anyway, now I've got, I, try, I, I bit the... The thread, and now pff, pff, thread residual is in my mouth. Son of a bitch. Anyway, so um, uh, what happens with her is that I, I don't never know what anniversary it is because 
Uh, she did a thing a while back. She went, it said on my thing, anniversary dinner. And I went, wait a minute, this is, this is October, I think. It, it's not any anniversary that I know of. And I said, isn't our anniversary in March? She says, yes, this is the anniversary of the first time we ever went out. I went, oh, okay, now you're finding every excuse possible to go out and have dinner somewhere. Okay, fine, good. So anyway, uh, but I, it was a nice wedding anniversary dinner. And uh, on top of that, um, I want to thank the guys at, uh, at her job for having paid for dinner. Uh, the reason they paid for dinner is what happens is every year it's a Chinese custom that all the people, guys she works with that she takes care of, all give her a, 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 a Chinese New Year gift. And it's cash. And uh, it was enough cash, uh, more than enough cash, uh, for dinner tonight, so that was that paid for our dinner. So thanks to the guys over at uh, over at City Capital for uh, having uh, uh, given me uh, given us a very nice dinner. But we had a very nice dinner, and um, we um, I I got her a gift. Uh, I, I you know I don't have a lot of bucks right now. Okay, you know expendable income. Let's put it that way. I have money, but I don't have an expendable income, and part of having to know how much is enough money to live on is dependent slightly on when you're going to drop dead. So if you underestimate when you're going to drop dead, then you're left with all this money you never used. And if you overestimate when you were going to die, you're sitting there in some poverty-stricken hovel uh, waiting for death to finally come and claim you. All right? Boy, am I... Am I depicting a very depressing world out there that's uh, coming to all of you. Anyway, so you don't know how much money is enough money, you know. Uh, I mean, hey, I've got enough money if I die in, oh, five years, six years, okay? Uh, we maybe have enough capital available to us if we live, both of us, to be 90, okay? But I, I'm, it's not like I'm spending it like crazy. It's not like I'm going out and like my friend Shecky did this week, bought three Echoes, okay? Uh, yes. Uh, so I, I don't do that kind of spending. But, you know, I, every now and but I, I, my problem is is that I, I, I'd, I'd like to lavish her with gifts and so on, and I just don't have the, the kind of income it takes to do that. So I decided for our wedding anniversary I would do something. And she was talking to me recently that she wanted a uh, an Apple Watch. And... Uh, uh, so I figured that's what I'm going to give her, you know. And I went out and bought her an Apple Watch. Uh, and she loves it, of course. Who doesn't? They're great. They're great. And I got her the smaller one because I, we put the big one, the one I've got here, on her, on her wrist. And it just looked gigantic on her. So um, we went with... Uh, uh, I went with the 38 millimeter one. It looks just fine on her. It looks really nice on her. And uh, uh, she's learning how to use it, and she loves it. And, you know, I send her notes every now and then, and there's a tap on her wrist, and she looks at it. And, you know, it's, it's uh, I finally had something, I, I finally did something for our anniversary. And I feel, I feel good about it, okay? I feel good about it. But anyway, so, and honey, if you're listening, happy anniversary. It's, it's, it's over by the time you listen to this, but... Uh, um, you know, it uh, it's not over while I'm doing this show. So happy anniversary, and uh, it's been a wonderful seven years. She said to me tonight, she says, so uh, how have the last seven years been? And I said, yeah, you yeah. know. I said, I want to thank you. I said, well, you've made my life a lot longer because it's moved by very slowly. And she went, oh. <laughs> Actually, it's been pretty good. You know, I'm pretty lucky to have her. Uh, I, uh, I lucked out. Not only did I get a really attractive-looking woman, and I'm not going to say for her age, an attractive-looking woman uh, who is in great shape, and except for that back of hers, which keeps falling apart. I mean, she has no spine left, but that's okay. Uh, but, I mean, I'm very lucky that I found a woman uh, like this at this point in my life, and... Uh, uh, I think a lot of people are 
are jealous of me that I have somebody like that. You know, and uh, I sp plan to spend the rest of my life with her. <laughs> Where am I going? What the fuck am I going to do? Right? Uh, uh, you know, today I was looking at um, um, an old, I, I'm restoring. Oh, it's been a real problem, too. I'm restoring an old TV show that I did for Channel 44 in San Francisco. It is singularly the worst I'm saying this in all honesty, the worst TV special ever done, okay? It's just horrible. I watch it and I cringe. I mean, there are moments that I like it. I mean, I could take certain parts out of it and it would be an okay special, but there are other parts that are just terrible. But I'm restoring it and I'm going to put it on Roku. I'm not going to put it on YouTube because it has a lot of what they would trigger as copywritten music in it. And, uh, but it's, it's an old show that we did and it, I've been restoring it and I've had to restore it because as I record the thing onto a file, it goes out of sync. And so a little bit of it is out of sync, but what I did is I found if I stopped and then started again, it would go back in sync again. So I've had to Jimmy rig the whole show together and I've completed it now. But, um, uh, and I'm trying to remember her name now. I was do, on the show is a about a 15 minute interview with Kate. What's her name from Star Trek uh, Voyager? Uh, uh, okay, what, 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 what's her last name? I just was watching it. Uh, she wound up on uh, Orange Is the New Black. Hold on a second. I'm going to look it up. What the hell? You just stay right where you, just stay right where you are, and I will look it up here. Uh, or Orange is the new bl uh, well, Star Trek Voyager. Let's just do that. Trek, and then uh, Voyager, and it, oh, okay, Kate Mulgrew. Okay, so I've got an interview on it with Kate Mulgrew. And I don't, I you know, I'm, I'm how long? How old was I when this show was done? God, that show was done in uh, I don't, I don't really remember. I think it was in the early 1990s. Okay. So I was about at least 25 years younger than I am right now. So that would place me, oh, I was 55 when I did it. Because we were talking about getting older and how it's nice that her career hadn't gone that well. All of a sudden she got Star Trek Discovery and her career is going well. And I said, you know, that's, that's, that's terrific because as you get older, it's nice to know those things happen. And I said, at my age, and she, well, how old are you? And I said, I'm 55. And she said, no, you're kidding me. You look so much younger than that. Well, I sat here going, does anybody say that about me now? Like if I say, hey, I'm 78 years old. Does everybody, do I get a large round of applause that says, no, you're a lot, you look a lot younger than that? Certainly not with this fucking hat. That's for damn sure. I look like I belong at a golf course in Boca Raton. Anyway. Let me have some coffee here. Well, I don't have my soda with me. Ooh. Suppose I get thirsty. If I get thirsty, uh, the citizen panel is going to have to do without me for a couple of minutes. I forgot to bring in my, uh, my soda. So. Oh. We'll wait till we get to the citizens panel, and then if I get thirsty, I'll tell them to just keep talking. I'll be back in a second. I mean, they leave me to go get soda. Why can't I do the same thing? So anyway, I, uh, so I it was a, so I will have that up on Roku soon. I uh, Roku TV, uh, Gabnet TV, not the regular Roku channel, but Gabnet TV, uh, and the reason why. Uh, it's on Gabnet TV. Is that's a different channel I've set up that I'm doing some work with using a new format they have called Direct Publisher, and um, I've put a lot of new videos there of old comedy shows and things like that. So I'm trying to restore anything from my past. So I'm going to do this as its own little special category of the worst TV special ever, and it was called Alex Bennett Wired Again. Now the reason for the title was. Uh, hey, I, uh, when I was younger, I used to get wired, right? Do drugs and so on. And now, in the days of computers, I'm wired again. So we called it Alex Bennett's Wired Again. Great title, right? Good title. I thought it was one of my better titles. So now it's 
two days, three days before the show is going to air. The ads have gone into TV Guide, Alex Bennett wired again, bah, 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 bah. Uh, see it on Channel 44, Cable 12 on most systems, and we get a cease and desist order uh, or letter from Wired Magazine. Yeah, those fucking pricks. They, uh, so they, they, uh, they've got this thing, uh, cease and desist, uh, stop. We, we, it's not a cease and desist order. It's a letter saying, do not use the name Wired in your title. That's copywritten. Now, to, be, to begin with, the, the TV station agreed with me, and they agreed that Wired magazine didn't have a case. But if we use the name on the show, they would then have to go to court and spend a lot of money defending the fact. And, you know, ultimately, we'd win the case because wired is a term. It's not a, you can't, you can't, you, you know, they can copyright or, or uh, yeah, they can uh, copyright the, the way in which their wired is spelled on their masthead. But they can't, you can't take a word like wired. It's too generic a term. Uh, I, you know, I wired my house and now I have a magazine about uh, doing electrical stuff and it's called Wired uh, Magazine or Wired whatever. This was called Alex Bennett Wired Again. It wasn't called Wired. It wasn't trying to associate itself or confuse people with Wired Magazine. I wouldn't want to because it's a shitty magazine. Okay. But they, they, so the, so the station said, look, we just got to do something about this because we, don't, we just don't want to have to go to court with this thing. And we're going to have to do it after the fact. Of course, we can go on the air with it on, uh, on, on uh, I think it was uh, Saturday night or Sunday night. I can't remember which day it was on. Uh, and we can go on with Wired again, but then we're going to have to maybe have to go to court with them and so on. And we don't want to have to do that. And so they, uh, they um, uh, we, we, we're, we were kind of like stuck between a rock and a hard place, and they didn't want to do anything about it. Uh, you know, they didn't want to have to deal with it. So what we did is we took the title where it said Alex Bennett's Wired Again, all the graphics that we normally had for that, and we just scribbled it out. We just put a scribble. Uh, I wish I could show you. I have a, a copy of the way it, it looked when we scribbled it. But uh, we scribbled it out. And that, that way we supposedly took care of the problem. And that we never heard from Wired Magazine again. But they made my life a living hell for a couple of days. And, and I've never appreciated that. And I've always hated the magazine. And have never bought a copy of it. And I hope you won't either. Okay? Even to this day, this is like 25 years later. Is that show that old? It's got to be 25 years old. At least something like that. Anyway, so I'm... Uh, uh, I'm, that's, that's, you know, what's happening. So, um, uh, uh, that was our, our thing. By the way, I, uh, it's, uh, Carter Bing's birthday today. He called the show occasionally, not a lot, but he calls and he's on uh, Skype. See all the names of people on Skype whose birthday it is today. It lists. And then I'm just clearing a lot of names out of here. There we go. All the things I have to do to get ready for the show. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that was my story with, the, and, and it'll, it'll be on uh, on Roku uh, at the Alex Bennett, uh, at, uh, uh, what is it? The Gabnet TV, it's called. Gabnet TV. It looks slightly different than the normal channel because it has a different way of putting together the site, uh, putting together the channel. But it, uh, you know, there's some stuff up there you might, find interesting we did a big comedy show uh i just got the date it was 1988 in uh at the frost amphitheater in um uh, at stanford and we had nine thousand people there showed up for this comedy show and uh it was it was just amazing and so we have some video of like shot from backstage and some of the stuff that's going on on stage and so on, including my friend Bob Rubin taking a, a buster, man. He just he fe he slipped, fell, and hit his head. And we didn't think. We, we, were, we were worried about him. But anyway, you, you, all those things are there. Gabnet TV on Roku. And if you don't have a Roku, well, then what the hell? You can go over and 
you know, we have, I don't have it anywhere else, do I? I don't, I, I don't have a lot of these videos on the old uh, uh, Gabnet uh, Roku site. Uh, let me see here. That's, that's, you type in Gabnet Live, or if you just type in Gabnet, it'll come up Gabnet Live, and that's the channel for that one. Uh, but I'm just trying to think. Uh, do I have it anywhere else? No, no. We haven't put it up. Uh, we haven't put it up on the the Gabnet Live channel, and I don't have it on the on the website at all. Um, maybe I'll put it up on the website. I, but I I'm not. If I do it, I guess I can run it through live stream. Live stream does make a big deal about the music and everything. <laughs> That's the other problem we have. You know, is that uh, here's here's what I don't get when we did this show. We had licenses for the music, okay? So now, right, we, I have the show and I want to put it up somewhere, but I might get complaints from YouTube in which they're going to say, well, you don't have the rights to this music, or if you do, please present them. And there's, hardly, there's no way I can present the rights because the rights were Channel 44's rights to use the music. So uh, I'm just going to put it up in certain places where people can get to it. But if you want to see the worst, literally the worst television special ever made, I did it. And you know something? I watched it tonight, and it was so bad I was proud. I know that sounds strange. How could you feel proud of something that is so, uh, so terrible, Alex? And the answer is, why not? <laughs> why shouldn't I be proud? You know? I did something particularly horrendous. There are moments in the show that are terrific, that are good. And there are moments in this show that are just screamingly bad. So, anyway, it was, uh, it was an attempt at something. We have no idea what it was. I also did two other specials for 44 called Alec, the Alex Bennett Comedy Hour, in which we had a bunch of comedians doing stand-up acts at the uh, Great American Music Hall. And uh, those I'm trying to convert, but again, I'm having the same problem with, for some reason, when I try and dub these things off, at some point, they start losing sync, and I have no idea why, and I wish I had some technical person who could tell me, and I wish I had another VHS machine in the house, but I don't. So um, I, I tried it on two VHS machines and was getting the same sync problems, and I have no idea why it happens. It's not on the tapes. So who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows, and who cares? Anyway, do you realize I've just talked my breath out here? And we've come up to the time when I'm supposed to go to the, uh, the citizens panel. Uh, amazing. Let's see here. Roku. Love the Alex Bennett comedy hour. Did you really? That was okay. It was all right. Uh, what, uh, what kind of coffee are you drinking? I'm not drinking coffee tonight. I am uh, uh, drinking um, tea. Uh, I try to do tea during the show, except on Friday nights. And the reason is, is that then I can get to sleep at a reasonable hour. Let me see here. Also, uh, uh, how about you put the logo on top of your hat or slogan? Uh, no, no, I don't understand that. Uh, Bob Rubin was my favorite of mine on the show. Yes, of course he was. Uh, let me see here. Anything else? Anybody's writing of any note? No, nothing. Nothing important. Let me just open up the lines, see if anybody wants to call me. Maybe give me some time to run out in the other room and get some liquid refreshment because this doesn't you know if you've got if you want to, to deal with um, uh, problems of uh, of thirst uh, tea is not going to quench your thirst right to me a carbonated beverage or snapple takes care of that jones so i may have to run into the other room because i forgot tonight because i was doing too many things wait a minute what's this what do i do here okay i don't <clears throat> okay we're all right Okay, all right. Yep, 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 yep. Let me see here. Where are we? Hell, what happened? I've lost something here. Hold on a second. There we go. There we go. There we go. I uh, I pushed the wrong button and something happened. So anyway, we're waiting for people who want to call us. Uh, whenever that may happen. The... Um, Gabnet lines are open. If you don't know how to call them, you can go over to gabnet.net. Don't worry, you're not going to miss any of the show if you're watching the video version because it's playing right there, too. And you can go right over there. And on the right-hand side of the page tells all the ways of becoming a part of the Citizens Panel. You have to get uh, 
uh, you have to get uh, Skype. But if you don't have it, no problem. There's a link for you to get Skype. If you need to call us using Skype, no problem. You just warm it up and turn on Skype and then click on a little button that's there and it'll call us. I mean, a lot of different ways you can do it. But on the right-hand side of the page, uh, it gives you every way you can call the show, including the telephone, which is the least preferable. But uh, that's only because we can't see you and, and you can't see us. And it, it just makes it a little more difficult. Hey, guess who we've got here, ladies and gentlemen, wearing the same kind of hat. It's Gabnet Garb. This is Gabnet Garb. What kind of what kind of pants are you wearing? Uh, the standard Gabnet. Uh, the Gabnet. Uh, uh, here we go. Yeah. The, uh, let's show them. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, mine's the same color. Mine's. The same. <laughs> Do you remember a movie with um, Clint Eastwood, Heartbreak Ridge, or something, where uh, his uh, recruits all had to wear the same T-shirt, but he never told them what T-shirt he was going to wear. And when they didn't have the right one, then they had to pull theirs off and go right. without a T-shirt to the sun. No, I don't remember that. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're in great grid. Uh, here comes Ray Renati. He's joining us. Hey, Ray. Hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me let me say this about uh, about Phil. You look happy tonight. You look uh, more relaxed than I've seen you in a long time. Uh, I have been sleeping uh, for hours uh, and for the last thank you, the last couple of days. See, I have a producer that comes in and brings me my call. I see. Uh, <laughs> Nurse Faye? Yeah, Nurse Faye. Yeah. Um, uh, wow. You know... I know what it is. What? I tilted the screen, uh, and uh, it doesn't give me as much neck pain, and the angle of the camera is better. So yeah. Also, but look. you should uh, go to your, your f camera and turn off the auto-focusing because it's kind of <laughs> pulsating a bit. Uh, okay. This yeah. is uh, – I'm using the standard software. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I knew you wanted to get um, uh, focus auto. Okay, I see that. Take it off of autofocus. Yeah, save. Mm -hmm. There you go. See, now you're, now you're not going to pulsate on us. All right. Yeah. So when's the, when's the bag coming out? Uh, Thursday. Thursday. That's more than the t nine days, isn't it? No, no. Uh, they put it in on Monday. So, uh, that, so it should be out Wednesday. Well, uh, Monday they uh, uh, well they usually say ten to fourteen. So I'm I'm pushing it, but yeah. Uh, they just the way you haven't worked. been able to leave leave the house or anything, have you? Actually, this morning I had made an uh, an appointment for an you estimate. Went, you went for a jog and splashed everybody in the yeah. neighborhood. No, well, I well I went I went on an appointment uh, because I, I didn't want to disappoint the customer, and I had made this appointment thinking that I was going to be up and running, and uh, yeah, you know, it was just the other day that I could get out of bed on my own. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, without having to be pulled. Yeah, and uh, or and have a little step ladder for assistance. So uh, no, but I, I feel pretty good. Yeah, and um, uh, so how did you hide the bag? I mean, where do you put the bag? Where do you get a? Uh, I have uh, an overcoat that <laughs> is um, it's it's actually a really nice overcoat. It's cashmere and yeah. wool, and uh, it's one of those three quarter coats. Yeah. And, and I wore that. Oh, and, I, and you hooked it with the pad with the the your. I hooked that to my pocket uh, on my pants, and uh -huh. then, uh, you couldn't see it. Oh, okay. So uh, you don't have to keep keep using the bag for an extended time. It's it's just a short. Uh, short period. I'll find out on Thursday. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Uh, they they say that normally they can remove it, and I go back to normal function. Oh, great. Uh, but of course, if they go to remove it on Thursday and, uh, something isn't normal, uh, either that or it might be diaper time. Yeah. Well, oh, uh, it's, it's probably I'm going to, I'm going to be getting some depends. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, friends are saying that they make thin designer ones. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. Costco yeah. has them in bulk. So yeah, I know Costco. Deal. We well, you know, a girlfriend and I have done several videos that we've put up on Facebook of us walking past the Depends and her yelling, "Hey, Alex, do you, you are you running out of Depends?" <laughs> and I say, well, 
I say, no, but here's something you won't need, and I hold up the tampons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I understand it was a uh, cruel stroke of fate that uh, uh, Marjorie needed the Depends, and you didn't. Yeah, yeah she needed them for a while. She, it, I can't remember what the, what the thing was. She was sick or something, and she just had a, had a, a leakage. She doesn't yeah. have it anymore. By the way, I just want people to know so she doesn't come home and go, I'm not leaking anymore. Don't tell people I'm leaking. <laughs> you know. uh, well, I will probably leak a bit. They say that that's one of the uh, uh, side effects of this operation and that I'll have to do Kegel exercises to be able to control that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't exercise anything else. I don't know if uh, that's going to work, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. And... Uh, uh, because I'd rather not wear them. But I figured I would buy a small package rather than go to Costco, hoping... Uh, uh, so, so, you, you, so you won't have extras lying around the house when you don't need them. Yeah, that's... that's it's, not like, it's not like toilet paper, where it doesn't matter how much toilet paper you buy. You're right, eventually going to get to the point where you go, you know, we're down to one roll of toilet paper. You could buy yeah. 10,000 rolls, and at some time in your life, you would go, oh, God, we've run out, yeah. <laughs> you know. But, yeah. but you uh, might you not do it at the store. Um, hey, if you need the depends, you need the depends. The only thing that bothers yeah. me is that I, I've got a, another uh, PSA test coming up because of my yearly examination with my normal doctor. Yeah. And I get a thing from my, from my urologist who said he wanted to see me in six months. In spite of the fact that my PSA went down, I, um, uh, and, and, and the fact that uh, he went in there and did a rectal um what do you scope call it? scope yeah. whatever that is and yeah. and didn't find anything said i there's some calcium deposits in there but outside of that it looks okay come back and see take another psa test and come back and see me in six months why why and i and the only answer i have is something that makes me distrust the doctor which is he wants to pad the bill you know he likes your asshole Every time you stick something in my ass or, 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 or wands me with this, uh, uh, what do they call it? The thing they do for pregnant women. Sonar. What, what, yeah, uh, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Um, uh, every time he does that, it's 400 bucks mm -hmm. that he pads onto the bill. So that's why he wants me back in six months. So he can make, you know, extra, make uh, between that and the, the, uh, uh, just a visit and everything. Comes to about six hundred, about twelve hundred bucks a year. He can get out of me if I come back twice a year. Oh, it takes I, a okay. couple minutes, right? And the thing yeah. is, the thing is, if my if my if my PSA went down, even though the velocity of it from the year before it was quite, a, it was about a point. Uh, even though that was the case, uh, it went down. So that shows that nothing's progressing. Why do you need me me in in six months? Nothing much okay. is going to change in six months either. Give me a year, and then you can see the difference. Lift, lift your hat a little like this yeah. and put a black light uh, and just see if it says Porsche uh, over here. Yeah, you. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, uh, that's why I distrust. I, I don't distrust doctors. What I distrust is what they've had to become in order to survive because of the way the government is doling out Medicare money. You know? It just gets worse and worse every year for them. Uh, when it should be the same, you know, they should be able to get, make a reasonable living. But when they've got a Medicare patient like me, they got to have me coming in every six months in order to in order to make a profit, you know. So, what the hell? I don't know. You know, so that so I, I go through so I have to go through this terrifying situation every six months because he wants to see me. Uh, you know, I, and and actually, I shouldn't be taking PSA tests at my age anyway. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's yeah. just, um, maybe you enjoy it. No, it terrorizes me. Hey, hey Ray, how are you? Hey, I'm okay. You know what I mean? I'm okay. It, that's a, that's a, uh, a qualified okay. <laughs> I had a rough 24 hours. What happened? <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, they had an award ceremony last night, the San Francisco Bay Area Theater Critics Circle Awards. Mm -hmm. And it's so political. I had one of my plays was nominated, but one of the people on the critic circle can't stand me. And for the third year in a row, she made sure that the other play at the same theater won the award for best play in the uh, 
it, it just and 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 I and I know that they knew they were going to win because the whole cast and all the creatives were there, and nobody from my show was there except for me. Uh, they got tipped off. It, I just I just get so um, the whole uh, it's like. Yeah, well, Even if you know little if you, show business yeah, stuff, it's if, just so if, political if, 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 and backstabbing. If you know they're political, then you shouldn't really care. You know what I'm saying? I know I shouldn't even go. I shouldn't even go. It's like why did I even bother going? You know? Yeah, and I'm not going to go anymore. I'm just Trump not doesn't go. go to those kinds of things either. Well, good for him. I mean, look, <laughs> I won two Emmys, one uh, two years in a row. I in won sports. an Emmy, in, one in sports and one for a show that I did. You know, for, yeah. for as a performer. And and uh, I got those two Emmys, and that's about the last time I ever worked television. <laughs> you know, so I got an Emmy. You know, yeah, that's great. what. What? Yeah, but what does the award get me? It doesn't get you anything. The only thing good about it's, this award was that for the local Emmys, you, you know what they did? They'd send the judging up to Seattle. In other words, the Seattle chapter would vote on them. Oh, they, that's good. And that's they would good. look at the stuff. So they wouldn't have any prejudice about, ah, I don't like Alex Bennett. He does a morning show and I don't like what he does yes. or whatever. It was done completely in an atmosphere of non being non-prejudicial. And that's why that's I think one. it meant a lot to me, actually. Yeah, then it's real. Then it's real. So you no. won a sports Emmy, right? Yes. They, a lot of people want me to give it back, yes. But uh, actually, I love that thing you did that won the Emmy. That was hilarious with the, the yeah. The beta break you, you said? That? The beta breakers thing. That was yeah. so funny. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just wondering, is there some way I can finagle getting uh, uh, the opportunity to shoot uh, like an Olympics or a um, uh, uh, an NF NFL uh, Super Bowl? Uh, you know, Alex writes a letter. Hey, I'm Emmy a winning sports uh, uh, person. And yeah. uh, yeah. we're going to send our staff photographer. But to... then they're going to ask the next question. Does he still have his prostate? When you say no, that's it. You don't get the job. Yeah, that... because they can't have you go taking a leak every 10 minutes. You got to be shooting the, the damn game. No, no, he won't. no. That, that leaking stuff, uh, taking a leak every five seconds is over. He's going oh, to that's right. He's going to have, have your depends. He's going to have a one, one hell of a stream all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you know, this uh, this bag thing is is fairly convenient <laughs> i mean you don't have to get up in the middle of the night yeah it's, it's not bad yeah uh, well i don't know where it all comes from i have so much i've filled that bag so many times a day i have no idea where that stuff comes from well you got to realize how big's your bladder I, I think it's pretty large and it can really stretch yeah, it can really? really stretch. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. uh, you you can get many pints of of urine in there. Oh so, well, I, many pints flow out. <laughs> you yes. Know? Yeah. Well, you know, after I'm through with the show, after the tea and everything, I'm I'm ready to I'm running I'm running free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we need I have to have I have to have a colonoscopy every two years. I get to yeah. have another one in June. Why every two years? Because I because I because I have all these precancerous polyps every time. Really? See, I, yeah. what happens is supposedly they you have to come back in three years if they find polyps. If they don't find polyps, well, maybe come it's back three in years. five. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe yeah, it probably three got years. It three. I don't mind the colonoscopy. I'm, I mind the cleaning out process the night before, but oh, otherwise, geez, that stuff. It's like drinking uh, seawater. Well, no, no, you, you're using the wrong stuff. Oh. There okay. is a thing. What is it called that I take? It it's uh, it's um, ch fruit flavored. It's in a small little bottle. Oh, really? And you take it. Uh, there is another preparation. Ask your doctor. Okay, uh, it's, I will. It's called. It's what is it called? I'm gonna have to. It's gonna. I saw it on the internet, and I was wondering why they didn't give that to me. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get them well, to give that. Well, my doctor, whenever like he wants me to clean out he gives me the says use this this stuff which is the uh -huh. stuff you were using the phosphorus yeah. stuff yeah and and the fact is i said no i said i've been I, last time we did it we used this other stuff. oh go use that then oh you know? i'm gonna do that and because and, and, drinking the gallons and, of the ocean and, water and by the way horrific. by the way it, one of the moments i was proudest of in the last couple of years i don't know if, why i was proud of this but after the the colonoscopy coming out of it my doctor comes to me and says boy you really cleaned out well that i did a good job of cleaning myself out and i went god that's almost as good as winning an emmy you know I mean, <laughs> it's 
They could just give Emmys for that. Yes, exactly. Is anybody going to call besides these two guys? Not that I mind having them. They're both Where verbose everybody? and good at talking. But anyway, don't worry about the fact that you know why you didn't get the award, so fuck them. Yeah, no, I'm fine now. I'm fine now. It just, uh, I was just thinking about it. Nah, I to, I'm in past it. Well, what's this new play you're going to go into on the 28th? It's called You Are My Sunshine. It's a new it's brand new play, just written. Uh, well, was, she's been working on it for nine years. Yeah. Um, it's ready to go. We're gonna. Uh, it it's about her great uncle who was uh, wrongly accused of murder. Wow. And um, and uh, his story. Oh, so good. it's it's kind of a true story. That's There's nice. gonna be music in it. Uh, it's a good play. We've been joined by Vernon Nunn, the master of Morse code. Everything. Gosh, that's so cool. It feels like the beginning of an RKO yeah. picture, doesn't it? Uh, hey, Vernon, you know, you, know, you, know, you know, in some of the old uh, introductions to those RKO pictures, yeah. Alex, they actually spelled out in Morse code a RKO picture. Oh, is that what they were beeping yep. out? Okay. Yep. Ah. It Never was had... cheaper than an announcer. Yep. It would seem obvious that, that if you were to say, <laughs> guess what they were bleeping out in Morse code, I'd say, an RKO picture, <laughs> you know. Uh, hey, it, Vernon, you know my my dad. Wait a minute, did they the did Navy, they bleep out? He, did, wait a minute, did they sorry, tap sorry, out? Sorry. Did they tap out an RKO radio picture or an RKO picture? And does it yes. change when they go to the radio name? No, it's just it's radio picture. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, yeah. What were you going to say, Ray? Oh, my dad was in the Navy, and he used to spy on the Japanese. He would listen to their uh, Morse code all day long. Yeah. And then write it down. That's what that's what his job was. And he did that for two years in the Navy. And then after that, he couldn't hear high pitched sounds anymore. And we had this TV in our house that would go all the time. And he couldn't hear it, so he didn't care. But none of us could stand like sitting in the in the family room with the TV on because <laughs> it made this high pitched squeal. But he was deaf to it from all the Morse <laughs> coat. Well, I, I suffer from tinnitus, but I don't think that has anything to do with my ham radio. Uh, okay. <laughs> that actually has something to do with loud sounds and because uh, it's a ringing in your ear then and, and there's been damage to the it, is it the inner ear. Yeah. Uh, there's so there's, many things that can cause tinnitus. It can be medicine. It can be. There's so many reasons you can have it. Surprise with all the shooting that I've done, I, I haven't developed it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um. Let me see here. Somebody, uh, uh, Cor Forbin writes, uh, Vernon, let's see your shirt. Boy, does that sound like something filthy. Hey, take off your shirt. Adidas. Uh, Adidas. Oh, oh the pants. Look, look at Wait, the your underwear is sticking. Oh, you, yeah. He's got gabnet uh, pants. Yeah, yeah, if, uh, everybody's got the gabnet oh. pants. <laughs> <laughs> They got to get that's the, the uniform. That's uh, the uniform. Oh, man. This is getting <laughs> pathetic, isn't it? What a bunch of fucking Alta Cacas. Jeez I almighty. Wore them on huh? I wore them on purpose. I purposely put these on. Oh, did you really? I'll yes. tell you, I, you know, if I don't leave the house, then these are the pants I have on because they're the most comfortable pants you can put on. So you know, I mean, I can go around wearing a, my pants with the jeans, with the belt, and all of that, you know, but why? Yeah. But if I wear them during the day, I can't get anything done. I just have this attitude like, yeah, I'm just going to lay around. Well, I, yeah. I just to say, hey, you know, uh, it says, uh, uh, Roko says, Gabnet Plaid. That's what she calls him. <laughs> or he. I don't know who Roko is. Anyway, um, uh, no, I, uh, I just, you know, I just figure I've given up. Uh, you know, it's just, it's either <laughs> this, I won't wear, I won't wear uh, jogging pants. So, you know. Yeah. This is it. You know, I've got my jogging pants, but I don't jog in them. So if I don't jog in them, are they jogging pants? Or are they just leisure wear? Hmm, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, so did you lose yeah. any weight from this whole? Have you gotten on the scale at all, Phil? Uh, yeah, I did. I'm sure it's water weight. Uh, I went uh, prior to the operation. I think I was two twenty three, and I and tonight I was two. 16, but uh, if I weigh myself in the morning, uh, I'll probably be a few pounds lower than that. So you gained weight? No, what I've lost loss? I've lost weight. Yeah, but how much? Not, I, Not like you but, thought. Yeah, in the, in the morning, I weigh less than I yeah. do in the evening. 
Yeah. Well, your so prostate. Pr- weighed in the how morning. much could your prostate have weighed? Um, 135 milligrams. <laughs> That's a lot of coke. Uh, no. Yeah. How? how uh, <laughs> Uh, what's 138 milligrams? How much is that in pounds? Anybody know or in ounces or? There's a thousand milligrams to an ounce. Is it? Hmm. Uh, is, is that the way it works? I don't know. I have no idea. I'd have to Google it. Yeah. I don't know the fucking pound? metric system. Oh. Uh. Have you seen this TV show Naked and Afraid on Discovery Channel? Is that? Is, well, is that the one where they just go out into the wilderness naked? Yeah, a man and a woman. They're yeah. naked. For well, I, days. I yeah, I watched it once, and I said, "Fuck you." You know, <laughs> you're doing a show called Naked and Afraid because you're trying to like grab an audience, right? Who, oh, naked people on TV, and then you get there, and it's all blurred out. I know. What's the point? What's they the point? I want to see but them it, naked. I want to see him getting his testicles hung up on a on an oak tree. Yes. You know. In in France, the French version, they actually show everything. There's no there's no blurring out. Yeah, the French, French naked don't in wear it, right? pants. Yeah, like, yeah, and, they, and if they do, they only change them like once every three weeks. They yeah. they, they did a study. Yeah, the do you think it matters what area of the of France they're from, like southern France? That yeah, in as great as. I can tell you, like it's in the north, it's so dry and cold. You know, you feel like you have no need to change your underwear. Mm-hmm. But when you're in the South, it's hot and humid, and so you want to change your underwear like three times a day, or your yeah. depends, or whatever you're wearing. I think people are, you know, they're wearing espadrilles, and they're uh, soaking up the sun, and uh, enjoying the cafe life. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's just different. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I think that they shower more often, or at least, you know, they go to the beach. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of bunnies, did everybody watch the uh, interview? Oh, well, I did. Well, well, let's let's, yeah, let's get into that. All right. Uh, did you watch it, Phil? Uh, I watched excerpts after. Now, which one are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking. The, the, I'm the, talking. The we're talking. No, we're talking. Stormy. Stormy okay. is not the hooker. Okay, get over it, Phil. <laughs> no, she's, she's not a she, hooker. She went for a hundred. Hundred and thirty thousand dollars to keep her mouth shut. She's a hooker. No, a hooker. No, 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 pay, no pay but hooker charges one hundred and thirty thousand dollars to open her mouth. <laughs> well, she did that first, and uh, I saw excerpts of the stormy. I saw the whole uh, the other gal, uh, McConnell, McC- uh, McCullough, whatever her McDougal. name is. We'll get to her in a second. McDougal. Go ahead. McDougal. Yeah. Uh, she was so pretty. She was worth watching. Yeah. Uh, the the. Um, the porn star, uh, I, I could do without. She, she's got that look like, you know. She's, she doesn't turn me on either. You know, she but. has huge tracts of land, though. I yeah. mean, <laughs> are, are those the ones that are shaved uh, and near her, uh, between her legs there? Uh, no, I mean, the balloons. They're oh, gigantic. I, I, yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, there's, she's got a face to protect them. That's true. Except when she was younger, I saw pictures when she was younger. She looked a lot better. Her mug, she had a nicer mug. Hey, we all did. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, but anyway, um, um, I. Uh, f- well, what's your take on the interview? The ones who saw it, you saw it, right, Vernon? You saw it, Ray? Yeah. She's, yeah, she's either a really good liar or she was telling the truth. <laughs> I mean, because she was really resolute. She was good. Yeah. Yeah. Not, well, yeah. Her story has changed three times, or at least, and Trump's. Well, well how's it all... changed? Uh, no, her story hasn't changed three times, Phil. Three times she has been bullied into signing something that she didn't really want to sign, but she felt like she didn't have a choice. Uh, That's she what she said. Choice, so when your life, when your life has been threatened, you kind of will sign anything. I don't believe that her life has been threatened. Well, are you can. You think that was a lie? That part where the guy, when the guy came up to the car and said. Uh, okay. Absolutely. And you can't prove it either. No. Uh, yeah. Why didn't she go to the cops? Why, why do you think it was a lie? I mean, I don't know either way, but I, I, it could if be, it couldn't was, be. If, because if she was truly uh, under duress and if she was truly uh, scared, she should have gone to the cops. If and there she- was a lie, Trump would have tweeted about it. He would have he would have come down hard. That's been Trump's mode all yeah. along. Trump has been if exceptionally him, quiet. He hits him back you ten times as that- hard. If this Stormy Daniels is afraid of Trump, I don't think so. I think she's just looking for the payday. No, uh, I think well, I Alex, think Trump's afraid of her. No, I think Alex says that she's got plenty of money. If she's got plenty of money, why'd she take the 130 G's? 
Because she was offered 130 G's. All right. Are you going to turn I, down $130,000? Well, I, I would. She doesn't keep her agreements. So, you know, I don't believe. Well, her. wait a minute. She doesn't keep her agreements to a, uh, to a. Uh, 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 no, to a letter, that, uh, to an agreement that wasn't signed by the party who was supposed to sign it. Doesn't matter. You know, when I have a contract with a customer, mm -hmm. I don't have to sign the contract. They have to sign the contract. That binds them to me. And in this I, case, this is, not, this is not this is not selling sell this is not selling carpeting. This but is no, this is agreeing not, not to do thing. something between two parties. And if both I'm, parties don't one of the two parties don't sign it, then it's not valid. I am not necessarily I am I am not a uh, an attorney. It'd be nice if one called up and could say one, uh, you know, one way or another. You know, I mean, it can uh, be argued. It could be argued that by taking the hundred and thirty thousand dollars, she, it, you know, she it was agreeing. Yes. To this, she cashed thing. a check. But the fact of the matter is that I don't think, for instance, as an example, I think her lawyer is very, very smart and knows the knows the reality of the situation. She's never going to get sued by Trump. Trump always says he's going to sue somebody, and then he doesn't sue them. You know why he's not going to sue her? Because he then has to be deposed in this matter, and he doesn't want to be dis deposed in this matter for Trump. fear the same thing will happen to him that happened to Bill Clinton in that he will be caught in a lie. Trump never, uh, supposedly the agreement was between uh, Trump's attorney, uh, Cohen, and uh, without it, Trump's, no, no. Uh, he was power. he was representing whoever DD was mm -hmm. on that document. Okay, uh, he was representing somebody. He was not doing it on his own because he wanted to help somebody win the election. And if he did, then he's That's in big trouble because he made a hundred and thirty thousand dollar contribution to the campaign without yeah. uh, telling anybody about it. Yeah. Uh, well, somebody's which is illegal, Phil. Which well, is illegal. So, so okay. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, Cohen is probably Cohen plot. is probably in a lot more trouble than Trump at this point. Yeah. But I think I the reason point. Trump hasn't been attacking Stormy Daniels is just like what Alex said. He doesn't want to sue her. He doesn't want to rile her up because if push comes to shove in a court of law, then Donald Trump's going to have to be deposed. Well, I would imagine if she broke the contract and the remuneration came from Cohen, that it would be Cohen that would sue her. No. 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 So, he wouldn't well, have... Well, uh, no, because uh, tr uh, the Trump lawyers have, th have, have thrown a suit at her for $20 million. Yeah. Well, that's what the terms of the agreement were. No, the per terms of the per per whatever, you know. Yeah. So if you do it, it was very funny. Her attorney, I can't remember his name right now. He's a very smart guy. He yeah. was on with, uh, with, a, with Cohn's lawyer, okay, because Cohn won't go on television with, uh, with her lawyer. And he said, your lawyer, your, your guy is just nothing but a, a, a bully, nothing but a horrible bully. And he said, well, that is defamation of character, and we could sue you for a million dollars every time you say that. And then he said, you're a bully, he's 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 a bully. He did it about 20 times. He said, now it's go just, sue me. But the thing Good is thing. that, uh, uh, he, the, you know, the, the, the fact is that he, uh, Trump would have to sue her and he would have to be deposed. And that he doesn't want to do. You know, because him going into court saying, how can he say to Stormy Daniels, you broke the agreement? Okay, without saying, hey, something did go on. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I'm sure Trump's attorneys are telling him he needs to just keep his mouth shut and they're telling him why. Yeah. Otherwise, he'd be all over. He Twitter has he has avoided that. There are two things he's avoided in tweets the last couple of days. He's avoided any mention of Stormy Daniels and any mention of Vladimir Putin. Yeah. In spite of yeah. the fact that the government as a whole took this action against the Russians in Seattle by uh, uh, kicking uh, what, how many of them out of the country? 17 or something like that. Yeah. 30, I think. 30. 60. 60? All right. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. But yet he is yet to mention it in a tweet. Nothing. No bragging about it. Nothing. Saying nothing. Stormy Daniels has never been mentioned. 
uh, in, in any tweet. Uh, these are two things he's afraid of doing. Yeah. Why is it that she came forward at this time? Well, what, look, what exactly look, was I'm, the impetus? I, I'm going to say the I'm going to throw this impetus, which is going to keep make Phil happy, actually, when I say it. That her no, that she's a she is a, she was she's not now uh, an adult film actress, and what they do is she's still out on the road doing the da- you know playing uh, th- uh, places pole and dancing. dancing pole dancing yeah. and stuff, uh, yeah. and uh, this ups her price. You know, uh, okay. this gets her big, bigger money. I can see why she does it because her whole life, her whole career has been based upon exploiting herself. All right. Yeah, I- there are people yeah. that approach her that have an agenda and are using her as a pawn uh, to. Uh, I, I don't. That. I don't think so. I think she is. She's doing it because she also sees the name Stormy Daniels is getting out there. Uh, there are possibilities of books. Uh, certainly, her fees go up at all the clubs she plays at. Uh, this is good business for her. Okay. She even said that. She said that she's getting a lot more work now that, and it's much better paying. Right. She said that in the interview. Now, I'm going to now place this interview the other night with Stormy Daniels against the interview with Karen McDougal, both done by Anderson Cooper, by the way. How many of you saw the Karen McDougal interview? Okay. I didn't see it. If I were to say, uh, after we watched uh, Stormy Daniels, I found on CNN, I found the... uh, uh, interview with Karen McDougal, and I played it for, for Girlfriend. And after it was through, we both looked at each other and said, that's the most important of the two interviews. The Stormy Daniels is a woman who one time was in a room with Donald Trump, uh, spanked him on the butt with his magazine, uh, fucked him because, hey, why not? I, you know, if, if he were one of my co-stars, I'd probably f- I'd fuck them, you know, uh, fuck him and shut him up and leave. Okay, and that was, it was about a courtesy. It, it, it was. It's about what happened, you know. Nothing more than that. And then he called her a couple of times, but she never went to see him again. All right. Uh, in the case of Karen McDougal, we have a woman who, for nine months, was going out with him on a rather consistent basis and saw him on a regular basis and had sex with him. Numerous, numerous times, uh, and 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 it shows, it shows what. Uh, and she, on the other hand, claims that she loved him. That uh, he kind of said to her that he loved her. Uh, she's claiming all kinds of things very reputably. And all the while being married. <laughs> all the while he was married, she wasn't. He was. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he was, and and even and had a little baby. And Cooper, <laughs> uh, Cooper even said, uh, Anderson Cooper even said, um, uh, d- "Did you hope maybe he would uh, he would leave uh, Mel- Melania and you'd be the next Mrs. Trump?" And she says that had crossed my mind, you know. Um, uh, it, but I think it was more of a story. Now the difference between the two is. The Stormy Daniels story has more legal implications involved in it than the Karen McDougal does. The Karen McDougal story has the implications of a duplicitous husband who's out fucking everything in sight. All right? Uh, That's the difference between the two, and that's the reason why the Stormy Daniels story is more important. Just But she only fucked him once. But there's not that same... There is the hush money part of it, but it, it comes via the National Enquirer who said if you sign a non-disclosure agreement with us and give us the exclusivity to your article, we'll put you in our sports magazine, we'll do this for you, we'll do that for you, and then they didn't do any of it, and they only gave her about half the money, okay? Some of it. Yeah, but that's harder to link back to the president than the president's own lawyer, okay? So that's why the Stormy Daniels... Uh, incident is so important well uh mcdougall was well spoken uh especially uh about the uh, the affair <clears throat> part yeah when it came to um uh the the last half which uh, I, I don't remember uh, what the subject matter was it didn't seem as uh 
as well put together. Or well, I think she basically was saying she wants to own the story. You know, for whatever reason, she wants to own it. She wants to be able to 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 have it uh, be hers, and whatever she wants to say, she wants to be able to say, uh, rather than to be portrayed in some way that someone else would imply. Okay. Yeah, she doesn't want to be portrayed as a hooker. She wants to be portrayed She's as someone who's She's not a hooker. Love. She was a playmate at. She at, was playmate at, of the year, Playboy magazine. The she first time not, they had sex, he he was trying to give her money at the end of the night. But she and, didn't, yes, and she turned it down. So that makes I, her not a hooker. His, yes, but what was his concept of her? Well, and I can't. I can't. I can't of, help what kind of sexist idea he had of her. What kind of well, piggish, thuggish attitude he had about her? But that, it 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 gives you pause when you say, "Hey, at the end of the night, he wasn't in love. He was handing her money." And uh, then you know she was she was saying, "Oh, me? I'm a farm girl from Nebraska. I don't do that. That's not what I do. Uh, I fall in love with my men." And uh, so you know. That's her. She's trying to get that story out that she's not a uh, a call girl. She's a uh, farm girl who has ethics and goes to church and does all well, of these things. Uh, and she was in love. She it, she seems to think but, that she wasn't that good a girl back when. Now she's a born again Christian, and uh, you know. She's uh, trying to change the the uh, the. And uh, by the, the way, story. at forty. No, 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 wait, no, wait. If he offered her money and she turned it down, she is by that de definition not a hooker. I understand. I'm not saying oh. she is a hooker. All I'm saying is his mindset was that he thought she was a hooker because he was paying her money at the no, end of the night. No, he probably wanted to, in a way, cleanse his guilt by paying her. Yeah, uh, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, you can't disagree with that, Phil. That, I that, mean, uh, how can you put it on her? He has guilt? <laughs> Let's say you had a wife, okay, and you cheated on her with somebody else. Yeah. Uh, what You would have to do some kind of action to cleanse yourself of the guilt. And probably that would, one of the ways of doing it would be to say, here, here's some money, thank you. No, no, I, I would just cheat more. <laughs> and so it became a, a normal... Uh, uh, a normal part of, uh, you know, the deal. Yeah. Um, but uh, is there anybody else going to call tonight, or is it just going to be us? I mean, it's a nice You know, you know what here. the creepiest part of the Stormy Daniels interview was, is the whole thing where he compared her, she well, said, to Ivanka. Well, here's what no, happened. No, yeah. no Ivanka. Uh, I mean, a after, after we saw him that's, say that's on Good freaky. Morning America no, wait, or whatever, wait a minute, hold on a second. date his daughter if he could. Hold on a second, Ray. Okay. C uh, MSNBC did a side by side comparison with the Karen McDougal interview and the Stormy yeah. Daniels interview, and they played both of them saying exactly the same thing that he That's had said to her, You remind me of my daughter, you're beautiful and you're smart. Right. You know, and, 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 but this is after we heard him say a month a few months ago that he if his daughter wasn't his daughter, that he would want to date her. Yeah, because she's so beautiful and smart. Yeah, he would want to date. Anyone. I mean, that, but no, but that's just so like, don't you find that? I don't know. I find it kind of gross. <laughs> it makes me want to vomit. Yeah. yeah. And I don't even have a daughter. OK, but I mean, that's just bizarre. I, I do. She's adopted, but still. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. And I don't know how old Karen McDougal is right now. She's but... 40. She's 46. That woman. She looks make, awfully good. She looks, she looks awfully good. And I can't see where she's had a lot of work done. Okay. Uh, she's just unlike Stormy. Un unlike Stormy. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> she's, she's she's a natural and uh, could have done better. Well, I, you know, I I, I guess if I have a, a, a down point with any of these people, it's the fact that they fuck Donald Trump at all. But mm -hmm. at least I got to hand it to Stormy because she said, "Did you uh, want to fuck? Uh, did you enjoy fucking him? No. Did you find him attractive? No." On but the other hand, on the other hand, Kara McDougal was going, "Oh, I loved him, and he was so sexy, and I, you know," and I'm going, "You must have been a stupid broad at that age, you know, if you thought this was this was a sexy, 
man, especially when you're at the Playboy Mansion, you're the playmate of the year, and there are a lot of people, you know, hanging out there. You know, it, 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 but on the other hand, um, I've been to the Playboy Mansion, and um, what, you're given a set of rules before you go. And one of them is don't come on to the bunnies. Don't come hope, on to the bunnies. Don't spill anything off the trays. No, no. <laughs> eat, eat all you want, but just keep your hands off the, uh, off the merchandise, you know. Yeah. Uh, because uh, they just, they, that was just the protocol. Uh, so, uh, but still she had the ability to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to see a lot of men other than Donald Trump. Now it, it agreed. This was how many years ago, 12 years ago, something like that, no, maybe 13 no. years ago, uh, Trump was a little better looking than he is now, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, would anybody want to fuck, fuck that, that manatee now? You know, uh, well, he's fucking us. <laughs> you know, he um, he still had that uh, star power back then, oh, and yeah. and when he had said in those tapes uh, uh, on the bus that if you're a celebrity, you can grab him by the pussy, uh, and you can pretty much have whatever you want. Uh, he was telling the truth, and he, he said, "I do grab them by the pussy." He wasn't talking rhetorically. He said that he does do it. Okay, so he did it. I you just want to make yeah, okay. and, and 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 more power to him if he could. Uh, oh, really? Now my question is the belt and zipper. The, the, the Republicans are worried about how all this is going to play out for them uh, in the congressional elections and senatorial elections coming up. Uh, do you think it's going to affect them? I think it is. I think his base is so behind him. There was a, a group of women that they had on uh, on television being interviewed, and these were like conservative, church-going type of uh, Republican women, and uh, they were basically saying it doesn't matter what he did 12 years ago. It matters what he is today, and uh, I don't think it's affected him with his base. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the also, thing. His base didn't get him elected. Well, what did? The people who voted for him who weren't part of that base. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, that's why I say the crossover, uh, he may lose that. Yeah. And uh, we're already, we already saw that in Pennsylvania uh, for that. We uh, also saw it in one right. other election, too, recently, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Roy Moore, maybe? Yeah, Roy Moore. Well, yeah. what I can't figure out, Alex, is why someone like Jeff Flake and Bob Corker, which... If both of those guys stood up to Trump and said, I'm not going to vote for anything that you want, his presidency is over. He will not get anything just like Obama. You know, but it'd be they, like it like the Republicans balking against Obama. But Vernon, they they there are things that they want and they coincide with what uh, Trump wants. And they I know, but both of them are saying they're not going to run for reelection. So why not just screw the hell out of Trump? Because they only have this window to get their policies uh, voted in. They already have their policies. Uh, uh, there are uh, others, I believe. No, Phil, the only thing, the big, big thing they wanted was that tax cut. All right. Okay. And, and, and the rest of it is, is deregulations. But I saw something on Huffington Post the other day that <clears throat> while Trump is bragging about for every new regulation, he gets rid of two. What? Yes. Anyway, um, it, yes. in this article in Huffington Post, it was saying how a lot of regulations that Obama ushered in on clean water and things like that, that this administration is backing. They're, they're keeping them. Yeah, it's just that there were so many regulations that were introduced in the Obama uh, administration, uh, the country became overregulated. And uh, he is. Well, that's a that's a Republican talking point, as far as I'm concerned. There are lots of regulations going that are in force right now that were not in force when I was in high school. That were not in force yeah, when I was wait, in Phil, college. Phil, but they're in force right you, now. You say and that. I'm alive right yeah, now wait, because of yeah. government regulations involving seatbelts and uh, uh, airbags. Because I was involved in a head-on collision in a, a Honda Civic. And if I hadn't had seatbelts and airbags, I would have died that day. Is Trump taking away seatbelts and airbags? No, but this well, is the same thing. The people, there are people right now who won't wear their seatbelts just because 
I'm an American. I have the right to do whatever I want. Those people that claim that they're uh, uh, they're natural citizens and they don't have to answer to the laws of the country. Those those people are nuts. Uh, have have yeah. you seen, have you seen about- them on YouTube where they get pulled over by a cop and they say they don't have to identify themselves, they don't have to do any of these things because they're a free American or free something or other? Oh yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I don't know where they get these people. I have you no guys. You idea. guys keep talking. I just I, you guys keep yeah. talking. I just want to go get a a, a snapple. Right, soda. Okay. Right. Get me talking. one. Too. Okay. Yeah. I- <laughs> I like it. Other cops almost always arrest them when they do talks that. It's so talks ridiculous. Amongst ourselves. Talks yeah. Talks talks amongst amongst yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so not only do they arrest them, but they always want to see the supervisor. And it's usually the supervisor. Yeah. Yeah. Puts the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's like a cop. I mean, if you don't give a cop the que- if you don't answer their questions and give them what they want, they can arrest you. I mean, right. it's basically all there is to it. Yeah. You know, they might not be able to keep you very long, but they can arrest you. Until yeah. they determine who you are, and then they yeah. can release. These people are so stupid. It's incredible. Yeah. I, I don't know where they're getting their information. It's yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, they probably get it from us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they watch us too much. All 34 of them. Let's see. How many we got right here? Uh, hey, Alex, have you adjusted wait, 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 your camera? Because it seems brighter. On here. Yeah, what, Vernon? Have you adjusted your camera? It seems brighter tonight than it did the last time I was on. Uh, which one? This one here, the one yeah. I got my finger. The one, on. the one I'm looking at you on right now. Oh, like, oh that's that, that's that's Denver. my uh, that's that's only uh, the. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Is it this, uh, which one am I blacking out right now? Uh, that Skype. One. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Brighter. That, that uh, well, the reason is is that I got to go look at it. I very seldom check on it. It's not a, it's not one I use. Okay. It, it's not so you the one have I multiple use. Cameras? Yes, multiple I have one I use going? for the air and one that I use for Skype. I can't. I have to have two for either oh, one. Yeah. Video oh. settings. Here I can. Uh, I think I can bring it down. Can I? How do I do your, it? Your uh, your oh, here YouTube go. one looks better. It's not as bright. Right. YouTube, yeah. of course. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter on the Skype because the Skype yeah. is what goes out. Okay. Exposure. Yeah. Bring it down. Oops. Wait a minute. Right light. Do away with that. And then bring this down. There we yeah, go. it's a little better. Yeah. yeah. Is that a little hot? softer? A little softer. Yeah, a little more desaturation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for brightness. Uh... I'll go black and white for a minute. No, yeah. that's too much. Oh, too much. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Gain. You got a hot spot in the left corner. There we yeah. go. Gain. There we go. There you go. There you go. That's pretty good. Yeah, okay. that looks better. Color intensity. I can bring that up a little bit. There you go. There we no, go. No, 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 no. Right, it makes yeah. your eyes look red. Doors are too yellow. <laughs> yeah. The How's doors that? are yellow. There we go. <laughs> black, yeah. black and white. Like yeah. Too much the other way. <laughs> That's Cap Net Noir. Is that okay? Is that all yeah, right? Yeah, that now? looks good. That looks good. Okay, good. All right. So it's, it's the camera that the audience doesn't doesn't see. Uh, it is the camera that I that we use for for Skype, but it's not the camera we use for the for the air. That's a one in which I have it uh, uh, hey, for that. Hey, how about uh, mm. a, a couple of votes on which photograph I should enter in the contest next week? Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Let me uh, let me let me let me blow you up to full size here so that the public can see it and put it up higher. There we go. Oh, uh, that's, this uh, one is yeah. an airplane. Right. Right. Right about there is good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and sixty feet of water. Yeah. Uh, uh, that uh, is uh, has been down for almost seventy years. Oh, that's very nice. That's very and nice. Uh, this one mm-hmm. is a uh, uh, this is a black and white one. Uh, this is Matas Yahu, who is a uh, Hasidic rapper. Yes, I know. Uh, and uh, this Yahoo. is uh, this is this is him. And mm-hmm. then uh, the. Black and white that I'm not so sure I'm going to use is this one. This is a Sarah Jane. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a bottle shot, and uh, it's for, it doesn't show anything salacious. But uh, so, which one would uh, okay? You sub- show me the modest Yahoo again because I was too busy busy adjusting something here. All right. I think the first picture. Would be my uh, choice. The, uh, the uh, plane? Yeah. 
Uh, okay. What, yeah, what do you so, guys think? Would you agree with me? Well, well, yeah. Uh, what, is, what, what, what contest is this, Phil? Oh, I belong to a photo club that yeah. meets twice a month. And uh, they're part of the Northern California something or other where there's 14 clubs. And so if you get a number one, which I have every, every two weeks since I joined them, um, it goes against the 14 other clubs and gets judged. So they have professional judges that come into our meeting and they critique your stuff. And then uh, when you, if and when you win, it goes in to be critiqued uh, by a, uh, in a competition amongst 14 uh, clubs. Is there a is theme there, or something for this? Uh, every every uh, different one has a theme. Sometimes it's journalism. Sometimes it's pictorial. Sometimes it's color. Sometimes it's black and white. Sometimes it's projected images. And, and what is it for this one? Uh, well, they have three. Uh, oh. They have a projected, which I haven't put anything in yet. They have a, a color and a black and white. Uh, oh, okay. So I was going to submit... Uh, one for color, one for black and white, and the and the thing about the plane is that the deeper you go, the more color you lose uh, because water filters color, and so I have to write a little ditty. Uh, should that be the one I end up submitting? Well, yeah. you know, you you don't have to make an excuse for the color. It's very nice the way it oh, looks. No, no, it's not. But what it is is uh, there is um, uh, many people aren't uh, accustomed to taking photographs underwater. And How deep is the plane, Phil? Uh, Sixty or seventy feet. Whoa! So uh, you, I think you lose uh, red, then uh, blue, and then green mm -hmm. yeah. as you as you go deeper. How about the people on the? Uh, um, let me ask them on the chat room. Which one would you take? Uh, they'll say none. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a while. There's going to be a delay, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I figure it's also this is a uh, older group of people and uh, in a retirement community where this club is, is held and yeah. almost all of the members are, are are retired and they have more money than they know what to do with and more time. And they and these guys travel to India and Thailand and all sorts of places. And they come back with some magnificent photographs and uh <clears throat> I don't know when my streak is going to end, but uh, so far, first place each time. And That's great. Congratulations. Okay. I like them all. Uh, who knows, you know? It's yeah. so subjective. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, let's see. You have a vote for the airplane. Phil, what did you shoot with? Well, he's not shooting with anything now. Um <laughs> AK-47. Sovereign <laughs> citizens is what they call themselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I actually shot that uh, a few years ago, and it was with an Olympus 5050, uh, which is just a prosumer camera that I had a, uh, an underwater housing for. Now I have a much more sophisticated underwater housing and camera. And uh, full they, frame. They, should, they should have a, a category of shot with an iPhone. Uh, because today, the things you can do with an iPhone are amazing. In fact, Steven Soderbergh just shot a whole movie with an iPhone. Wow. Do you, uh, uh, not, not to mention, you know Yoni Maieri. Yeah. She teaches a course on iPhone photography at uh, Cal Berkeley. Well, it, you know, I got to tell you, it's probably the, 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 the iPhone, I would say, and more particularly smartphones in general, are probably the most used cameras in the world now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There are more photographs being taken every second on this planet than have ever been taken before. Um, and uh, I've taken some spectacular pictures with uh, with an iPhone. And the yeah. and the, the 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 kind of quality you're getting on iPhones today, it's it's amazing. The only thing you don't have is the ability to focus and do uh, depth of focus and things like that. Well, and they're getting close to that too. And and the lack of uh, ability to photograph in low light. Uh, uh, no, these things do pretty well in low light too. I'm amazed. Uh, actually, if anything, you can't adjust that so that it will 
suck out whatever light it finds rather than you adjusting to whatever light you want it to find. Oh, it's, it's all automatic, but I've taken a number of pictures with an iPhone and there's motion blur because there oh, yeah. just isn't enough light right. for it to do what it has to do. Right. But I don't have a lot of light on in this room and look how the webcam looks, you know? Yeah, but those are those are pretty sensitive and video seems to yeah. be different as far as sensitivity goes and yeah it is and and range yeah. than uh, still photos well I, I, we could still use some more callers if there's anybody out there who wants to join us if not we're having a nice little happy fizzies party here on our own and there are a lot of people listening to it so i don't give a shit uh let me bring up another story uh i was feeling i'm feeling guilty about something i'm feeling guilty about still using facebook Mm. And I'm feeling guilty about it. Not for me. I mean, I have 5,000 friends, none of whom know me particularly, uh, and none of whom I know particularly, but I have 5,000 friends, uh, including Vernon. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I use basically my page as a point of publicity as opposed to the GabNet Live page, which hardly anybody ever goes to. Um, they all want to get into the club they can't belong to. So, you know, it's, it's because you can all you can have is 5,000. But I've, I've, if tomorrow I stopped Facebook and let's say the day afterwards I started up again, I wouldn't have 5,000 people and I'd probably never get 5,000 people again. I got that Did while I was. Celebrity pages, you know, where you're, uh, they're only able to like it. And, uh, but yeah, then, but and I mean, I, I have one of those, but we don't have that many people on them. I'm still trying to get subscribers uh, of a sufficient number on YouTube or up, up around. We're almost we? at 700, I thought. No, 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 no. I think we it's just hit 600. 600. You could always, you could always do like I've done, Alex, and that's suspend your 591. You oh. can suspend your Facebook account and not lose anything. Well, here's the thing. I, I, the reason I feel guilty about it, and this is, this is my thinking on this, is I think that by having a Facebook page, I am promoting people to use Facebook to contact me uh, and to have a Facebook account in order to do that. And I think I may be endangering my audience because no. I don't like what Facebook is doing. I don't like the way that they have not cared about the protection of their users. Did you hear that uh, statement by Zuckerberg, which he said that the people who signed up knew what they were signing up for? And uh, he, he seemed, I don't know if the word's contrite, or, uh, uh, but he, uh, now he's going to talk to... How do you feel about the claims? Interviewed. Look, I, no, uh, uh, quite the contrary. I know what I signed up for, and what I got is not what I signed up for. I did not well, sign up for him. Be. I did not sign up for him... Uh, to be able to know Stop all the phone stuff. calls I make on my iPhone. I You know, was it the book 1984? I can't remember where they said that uh, all, you know, they were collecting all the data and the person who had all the data was going to run the world or was that a Batman thing? Uh, uh, I don't know, I, I don't, but uh, I, that, that apparently is the fight going on to this very day. That, you know, that's right. But the and, point and is, Google the point is, is just that, implicit as Facebook. Uh, most people know what they're getting into with uh, with um, um, Facebook. They know that they're going to be public because they have a page. They know mm -hmm. that their preferences and things like that, that they list on that page. In other words, they know that what they have on that page is not private, although they can they can choose to make it private, you know. Um, but there's a lot of other information they've been gathering from you. Things that that maybe you don't want them to know and you don't want them to use. And, and don't you then don't say it. On no, Facebook. no, it isn't a matter of saying it. It just it starts going into your preferences when you go to other stuff. I mean, they're culling material from everywhere. And in supposedly they know all the phone calls you make. I did a carpet job for a company called Double Click uh, yeah. back in yep. 2000. Yep. And Double Click. Yeah. Double Click. Uh, they would. They would garner information on uh, what sites you went on to so that they could sell it to companies so they could uh, target ads to you. Now DoubleClick is owned by Google. Uh, and uh, so Google is just as complicit 
in in what you're doing. I I let me put it this way. I would be I would expect more of that out of Google than I would out of Facebook because of the nature of the business. The business is wide ranging. It's a search engine. They've got products they sell. They have, you know, phones they make, all these kinds of things. And so I can understand where they might be more involved in something like that. But for Facebook, with this kind of what we would call benign method of... What you they, sound like a woman scorned. No, you know, it's a, it's a, Facebook it, it's a, it, it presents itself as a very benign source of social networking. You know, you have a page, people commute, com, uh, uh, commune with you, uh, they talk to you, they send you notes, you send them notes back, they send you messages, you can even send some video to each other. This is all, any, all sounds very benign, but when it then yeah, becomes a very Machiavellian scheme. Do you it, ever ask yourself why it was free? And uh, remember the old I, adage. I, I, you know, I understand why. I understand why it was free because they put those ads on the side of the page for me to look at. That right. I will understand. I don't mind it when people use advertising like uh, YouTube, although they don't, can put ads before and after my uh, my videos if they want to, and I understand that. I'm getting I, this I, service for free. How did they know what ads your viewer wanted to see unless they targeted well, your that, that's uh, why they that's likes. what that's why they bought double click because well, double, double click yeah no double click would under, understand uh, what your preferences were from what you clicked right excuse me I uh, have to blow my nose so uh, this this gatherer of information uh, that supposedly is no different than a CB radio because uh, when you're uh, on a on a CB radio, that's a public airwave. When you're on a ham radio, it's a public airwave. And what whole, you say, whole different, whole different set of rules. Is it, it's available no, to everybody? No, no, it's a different medium, entirely different medium. What does Vernon think about that? CB radio will only go about two and a half to three miles. Mm -hmm. The internet goes worldwide. Yeah. Well, it's ham just got radio. Ham radio is subject to propagation conditions. So, you know, you might be able to, somebody in California might be able to hear my signal at certain times of the day on a certain frequency, but they can't hear it all the time, anytime they want. No. Well, uh, I was subject to propagation, but I had it removed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just want to, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, the big thing with Facebook, I thought, was that they were not only garnering your own personal information, they were then going out and getting all of the information from everybody on your friends list. That's right. Yep. Now and that that, that was right. a huge pro what? You, you there was a bar whenever they a, a program would have that it would say do you want us to add your friends from uh, Facebook or from uh, well, That's on your, uh, those are on, uh, those are on the outside programs. Do you want to use your Facebook account to sign into this? I never do that. I, I constantly I don't either. Got, I got, yeah, thought they were doing it <laughs> Okay. I thought they were just doing That's it precise. whether you did that or not. Uh, I just figured I don't have any friends, so, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, DoubleClick just gets your own information from cookies on your machine. Facebook was going out and getting information from all these other machines. So they did. And then it were exponentially. There's a question. Of, of, you, know, you know, you're right, Phil. I know what I was getting myself into up to a point. I didn't realize I was getting myself into this much trouble. I saw you know. a documentary on Facebook uh, with early on when he was at, uh, was it Harvard? Yeah. And uh, he came up with the idea that it was sort of like a spider web that went and, and pulled together friends that you. It started uh, out as, it started out as a college only. Yeah. Uh, right. But, uh, but what it did was it, 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 it was like six degrees of separation so that you could find people that knew other people and uh, see if you wanted to know them. Uh, that that was that was its thing. It was like a spider crawling and 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 getting bigger and bigger uh, to open up the world to uh, to people. <laughs> Bless you. Well, Bless you again. Whoa. Bless you. That's a good one. A lot of sneezes. <laughs> oh boy, the sneeze button. It's the allergy time of the year. Yeah. Anyway, kind of allergies. It's snowing there, isn't it? I, I don't know. We got mold and dust in this apartment house. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's a yeah, it's a sick, it's so. a sick environment to live in. Yeah. 
Hey, um, can I show you a picture I've had published three times in different oh, yeah. magazines? See sure. if I can get this to. Can you see that? Uh, not yet. Slow. Uh, oh, oh, wow. Bullfight. Yeah. In Acapulco. Uh, uh, that was in Acapulco. Yeah. Uh, how, how close were you to the... Uh, really close. Yeah. I, I was in the front row. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. Yeah. Now that you know, it's funny you should bring us, give us a picture of bullfighting because tonight I well, was talking with girlfriend about bullfighting. Oh really? Well, well we were talking about where we're going to go on vacation. We're thinking of going to Spain and then to the south of Spain to like Bilbao and places like that. And uh, uh, at which point you guys are all on your own. I'm off the air for two weeks. I, I, I'm going to take a vacation for the first time in four years, five years. Good. But anyway, boy, am I plugged up. Um, uh, we got to talking about bullfighting because I said I've never been to a bullfight and I've always wanted to go to a bullfight, not in Mexico, but in Spain. Uh, different culture than Mexico, all of that, Spain. And I said the reason I wanted to go to it was I think the Spanish people are wonderful. I think they're, they're, they're warm, they're hospitable, they're helpful, uh, they're decent. Uh, you, you can't say that about the French, you know, but anyway, <laughs> I know you love the French, Ray, but, uh, no, I don't disagree. I, I, with just, you. I just had to do a, jo <laughs> a joke at the French is at French expense. Anyway. So what, where was I going with this? Oh yeah. So, Spain. uh, so I, but I've never been to a bullfight and I would like to know I, how these, why these wonderful people love bullfights. Now, I don't know if well, they stopped bullfights in Spain. I no. Mean, They've stopped most of them in Mexico, but Spain, no, they have not stopped it. It's like the national sport there next to soccer. They, I, would li see, I would like to know what they, these, these warm, wonderful, decent people that I've met, these very culturally enabled people that I've met, see in bullfighting. Why did Ernest, Ernest Hemingway go to a bullfight? Okay, I can tell you just from my experience. I mean, it, it's awful and absolutely beautiful at the same time it's mm -hmm. like watching a, a, like a, especially when they have the really professional bullfighters out there it's like you're watching ballet it's incredible like really good ballet but at and the same easy. time it's absolutely disgusting because they're just torturing this creature so and it's it, it's amazing it's the strangest thing i've ever seen it's easier to see than pit bulls and chickens well, that's for sure. <laughs> but it's 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 totally beautiful and totally horrible at the same time. But I think they they're so used to it they don't see the horror anymore. Um, and they have the running of the bulls where they get revenge on the uh, people. Uh, right. So yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. They, they, uh, there's also have you ever heard of Tamplona? Uh, yeah. That's what you that, take that, out that, your no, ass. That's where you. that's where they have the running of the bull dikes. It's oh, really, okay. <laughs> you know, hey, the, the bulls get to have revenge. By the way, dyke is not a bad term, might I add. I've asked many lesbians, and they say dyke is a perfectly acceptable term. How about Especially butch? In the Netherlands. Butch is fine. Butch is fine. Sim simply means the person is butch. I mean, sometimes gay guys will call other gay guys butch. How yeah. about rug muncher? Well, then you're getting into an area... <laughs> That is, uh, uh, that, that is that is uh, is 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 thorny. Well, hairy at least, but thorny as well. Yes, <laughs> some are thorny. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, uh, uh, I had a girlfriend who ran uh, the the Bulls of Pamplona. She, oh my God. Yeah, she wore one of the white outfits and the kerchief, and she she you know what you got to do? You take a newspaper and then you have to hit the bull with the newspaper to, to accomplish what you're supposed to accomplish. It's crazy. And uh, she said when she got back to the hotel, she took her pants off and there were literally footprints on her butt because she was running so fast, her heels started kicking her butt. <laughs> she said it was the most terrifying thing she's ever been involved in in her life. I had a friend that said he hid uh, on a corner, but somebody else told me the corners were the most dangerous spots, uh, you know, the corner of a building. Yeah, because they get they get kind of bunched up. It's like it's like a like a. a um, like what do you call it? Like a, like a cork in a bottle. The, the the bulls get stuck there, and then they just start plowing into people in yeah. the corners. Yeah, yeah. and right traffic jam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
you know. So I, that, I the adrenaline must be just amazing. Well, I mean, oh. it's got to be an amazing. It's got to be an amazing thing. But I've often just wondered what is it about <clears throat> bullfighting that people love, and that's why I want to go to one because I want to g experience whatever it is you experience. The funny story I always like to tell is, is George Lopez. Uh, told me once that when he was a kid, he went down to Tijuana to see the bullfights. And I said, do the bulls ever win? And he said, this particular day that we went, a bull did win. He, in fact, survived the entire thing. And I think he got the, he got the, the, uh, the uh, matador. Uh, you know, he it didn't hurt him terribly, but he literally, the bull won. <laughs> Yeah, And he said, so what did they do? And he says, they led the bull out of the ring to the cheers of the people yelling, Viva Toro, Viva Toro, you know? And but then they, they go slaughter no, it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He says, oh, sorry. and then in the middle of them yelling, Viva Toro, Viva Toro, you could hear a shotgun going off. Yeah. No. <laughs> so much. Oh, because for they have a deal. They, they sell it to the local restaurants. So they have to kill the bull. But the, is bull meat good it's meat? Bull uh, yeah, apparently it is. Uh, if you cook it correctly, yeah. I, I had heard they gave the bull meat to the poor. Well, maybe they do, but I know they kill it even if the bull wins. I know they just kill it, like you said. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if I'm a bull, I'm going to that ring. I just go, this is it for me, you know. Just try to take well, out as many of these assholes as I can yeah. and, and hope for the best, you know. Well, they have to kill it, too, because by that time the bull is so poked and prodded and bleeding to death that it wouldn't live anyway. Well, I want to I mean, know what you know it, it, what the fairness is in that. I mean, to begin with, I think bullfighting was invented by a guy who wanted to get laid and who noticed, knew the trick, and he simply said to his girlfriend, watch me, and he took a red cape and he put it out beside him, and of course the bull would run for the red cape, and then he would flourish it, and the bull would run past him, and she'd say, oh, you're so brave, you just let that bull come at you, and you... You manage to survive it, and uh, let's go fuck. Uh, that, 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 I think everything started by a male started by some way to get laid. That's my theory in life. That's how Stormy Daniels got handled. Yeah, anyway. True. Back to Stormy. Uh, see how things go 360? Anyway, um, uh, but the fact is that, that it is a thing where the bull will go for the cape, not for the person. If the person isn't moving but the cape is dangling, they're going to go for the cape. All right? Usually. And when a matador gets gored, it's because he fucked up big time. You know, he yeah. just isn't very good at it. But the thing is that I didn't get is it's not fair because first they stick picks in him. The bull. That cools off the bull, I heard. It's a picadors that yeah. on horses. They come in in horses, and they stick and with these long poles, and they pick it. They pick at No, they, they do it to weaken the bull. Because uh, when the bull first comes out, it is pissed off. They, put, they keep it in a pen with little pins in it for like two days, and it can't get out. It finally gets out. It wants to kill everything. And mm. so they just they exhaust the bull. And one of the things they do is they poke at it with these, little, with these right. long poles. But that's Swords. the starters. Then now we've got the, you know, we have the, the matador. And he is supposed yeah. to literally, I guess, shove the sword shove in the back of the neck. Yeah. And if he does it right, the bull will go right down. Yeah, because Pen it goes through the shoulders and penetrates the heart. So it goes right through. And then he has to hit the heart, which is near the chest. Yeah. So that's and it's right. The the but this is after this animal has been brutalized for a half hour or so yeah oh at least oh more than a half you know hour. and by the time on. by the time he sticks that sword in him that bull is so weakened from the picks and the blood and the, all of that so where's the fairness in it if you didn't have the picadors then it'd be interesting there's no fairness that's the same operation they had on me <laughs> Last week. <laughs> okay. Really? Well, how many jokes yeah. are we going to get out of your 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 uh, your uh, as many as possible? <laughs> your, your prostate. The, uh, yeah. yeah. That's the most horrible moment of the bullfight, by the way, when he sticks that. I mean, he makes they do this big stylized thing, and the crowd goes crazy, and then he just he sticks it in the shoulder, and oh. the bull. If he does it right. The bull just falls to its knees and just like makes these horrible grunting sounds. Oh God! And then just falls over and dies. I mean, it's so just absolutely horrible. Alex wants to go to that. Yeah. Hey, it's horrible. Hey, did they have it's the worst thing I've ever seen? What? Do they have clowns in a bullfight like they do at a uh, rodeo? 
No, but they have other bullfighters that are kind of like clowns that run around and taunt the bull and stuff. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. They're sort of like the clowns. Yeah. Wow. Oh, by the way, I just want to mention next uh, Monday, I, hopefully, I'm going to, during the afternoon, uh, we might not have a full show on Tuesday. I don't know. Uh, because I'm going to be interviewing my friend um, uh, Jack Garfine. Oh. Uh, and we're going to, it's going to be, the, I'm going to try and do a couple of interviews with him over time. But the first one is going to be about the concentration camps that he was in. He was in 11 of them as a child. Oh, my God. And uh, I'm going to interview him for as long as I can, if it's two hours, and we just will have that as the show that night, you know, on Tuesday night. But, 11 uh, camps. Do you get a free a free night after 10? You get a, you get a set of steak knives for that. Yeah. yeah. Really? Is this yeah. a German? Is this World War II? Yeah. Wow. These weren't summer camps I was talking about, Ray. No, no, I, I wasn't sure which war. I didn't know if you meant, like, uh, Yugoslavia or something. No, he survived. Was, he, survived uh, he survived uh, uh, 11 concentration camps. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh, he's one of the survivors. And then, then he became a very well-known uh, Broadway director and uh, uh, theater teacher and um, motion picture director. Did What's his name? Like Jack Weisel. Garfine. He did two films. He did The Strange One, and he did, what was the other film he did? It's his big one, actually, and uh, they've just been re one of them just been re-released, um, but uh, something wonderful, I think it's called. Uh, oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, and uh, Jack is uh, was, you know, I, once we get into his Hollywood, it's like there are two whole stories to tell here, his Hollywood period. Uh, and his Broadway period, he was one of the founders of the Actors Studio West. Uh, and, I mean, he knew everybody. He knew Henry Miller. He knew Arthur Miller. He knew, uh, yeah, what are you going to say? Uh, you haven't interviewed him yet, have you? No. Uh, what, what was his mindset on uh, surviving confinement? And uh, well, how, did, how did he? I have yeah. questions of that task. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that was, uh, and it'd be interesting because, uh, you know, everybody deals with adversity. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in an area that I never hear discussed. And that was what life was like day to day in this environment. You know, probably trying to get food and survive. Well, they were being fed. They were being starved, but they were being Barely. fed. Yeah. It, it, I'm, it, these are all questions I want to ask him. And, you know, uh, hey, was one camp better than another? You know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, on top of all of this, uh, when you hear the story of the day he met Mengele, uh, a chill will go down your spine. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I thought... Wow. I thought my, friend's, my friend's father it, it was uh, young, uh, under 14, 12... And uh, he was given some jewelry by his mother. Uh, and the idea was he could use the jewelry to buy food in the camp. Jewelry. Yeah. And so uh, he gave it to uh, one of the Jewish guards. And uh, they would give him a little bit of bread. But uh, it didn't last long. It's amazing what people had to do to survive. And uh, they want to take away our Second Amendment rights. He, he said to me that he uh, he I, he came out of this. He'll probably say this when we interview him. That he came out of this uh, really having an intense dislike for humanity. I would imagine, but a deep respect for human beings. That mm. there are individuals that in his life that helped him survive. You know, some of which were guards. You yeah. know, he said. Those were good people, he said. Uh, and it, 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 well, I'll let him tell the whole story, but you know, it's uh, it, it, it's uh, I I'm, I I've been wanting to sit down with him. I'm going to try and video it as well, so that we can show it that way. But it's really going to be audio centric. Uh, he uh, he is a um, an amazing man who I I love dearly. I've just gotten to know him in the last year or so. And uh, I only feel bad that I've met up with him at 87 years of age, 
because I'm not going to have them as long as a lot of other people have had them, and they're very lucky. They're very lucky. This is a cool camera one. guy to come in and uh, voluntarily uh, shoot shoot it for you? No, no. Uh, video it? No, no. I'm just going to set up the cameras like I do with. Because I got my friend Stony Jackson up in Scarsdale. No, it, it 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 it. I would rather just I just rather just turn the cameras on, do the two shot, have right. us talk because you know when it comes down to it this show is an audio show it's meant to be an audio show and somehow it's become a video show because that's the direction of the web well yeah unfortunately you know well, yeah. because my you're holding, to, you're holding on to a vision that is 50 years old no i've gone along with every change that you could possibly make i'm doing it you know, and this is the one where you're kicking and screaming about the change. You know, well, I'm I'm only kicking and screaming about it because um, uh, I, I've, I'm I'm very happy with YouTube. Okay, I have to say that I was very unhappy with Facebook and their ability to put across a consistent video image. Uh, I've never had a, one moment oh. of trouble that wasn't caused by me. Yes, but the, isn't this YouTube Live fairly new? Uh, to where you could do this, uh, whereas before it all had to be pre-recorded. No, actually, uh, actually, YouTube Live has been around for quite a while. It's just they put it in a form that's easier for us to do. It yeah. allows me to create, like when I'm through with the page today, I'll change the date that the next show is and put a new time for it to start, and there's a countdown that goes on. And it's you a, know, I mean, it's amazing I, the way it just comes up on the screen. As soon as I, all people have to do is they have to just tab the page. And just go to the page, and when the show starts, all of a sudden, it'll start working. You know, yeah, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. So, Alex, you don't have to download any other software or drivers or anything like that? The, only thing, the only thing that I need in the way of software is the way I present the picture. I could just present it showing you a picture of me and the camera, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, which is just a, a, a very static shot of me. Uh, I could do that very simply, you know, yeah. this, right? Uh, yeah. I could do that. But for me to get all the people together and me in the corner and the stuff that says uh, the Skype phone number and uh, the, the Skype number and the phone number and all of that, that yeah. takes a program called OBS, which is free, uh, mm -hmm. but you have to know how to use it, you know. Okay. Yeah. One of these days I'm going to get a green suit, get, get it on and and find out how to use the green screen on OBS. Why? Because it's just something else to do, although lately I haven't had a lot of time. Except uh, your computer, as I said, is, is totally wiped. Tomorrow I go to my storage room and I get the original box that came in. Oh, good, good. And uh, then I'll be shipping it Does out. Does it come with a warranty on your part? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't this the one you had to send <laughs> yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it the one you had 60 to... minutes or the city limits? It, isn't this the one that got replaced or something because you had yeah, some problems? Yeah, they replaced the uh, motherboard oh, really? uh, warranty. But it's, After, uh, hmm? but it's worked fine since. Oh yeah, it's 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 this is a it's it's a race it's a real racer. It's um, yeah okay the so fastest it, one you can get. But but the motherboard went bad in it. You don't hear about that happening that often. Yeah, they uh, they took it back. They replaced it. I'm pretty sure they gave me the same serial number unit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, because I had the uh, Apple Care. Yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Good. Good. Well, well, there's always a percentage that are going to go bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, this one will go bad two days after the credit card clears. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah no kidding. promised. Uh, I, you know, no, no, no I, sad faces, but the, you know, the no, thing no. works fine. And if it doesn't, there's... Look, it sounds to me like I got another machine that, that will give me many years of service. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. The only reason I got the other one was that, uh, you know, some of the programs I'm using and uh, when you render the photographs and changes, mm -hmm. for instance, in Lightroom, when I uh, highlight someone's face and where I dodge and burn, yeah. uh, it's instant on the Mac Pro. Uh, whereas there was a, a, a delay that was uncomfortable uh, using the uh, Mac Mini. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so, yeah. 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 I, so I, I found that too, Phil. So I use my, I have a, a PC I built that I use for Lightroom and I, put, I render it one to one and there's no delay at all. 
But yeah, like on my Mac, on my small Mac, there's a delay. Well, I'm really going to be I'm going to be happy to get it annoying. because I'm going to use it to, yeah. for other purposes. For the yeah. time, it's a backup machine basically. Because yeah. this desktop, not, this de it's, this desktop it's, that I have here, the yeah. Mac, it's getting it's but it's about eight years old. It's getting long in the tooth. Well, no, it's about six years old. It's getting long in the tooth, and it this, still works beautifully. But you know, one of these days, it co could go bad. So. This is the fastest uh, mini that you can get. I know. It's a i7 3.0. I mean, it's uh, yeah. 60 gigs. It's, it's Yeah. But yes, uh, Vernon. Uh, speaking of delays, uh, you were pointing out some time ago about not using Bluetooth headphones because there was a slight delay that was yeah. driving you bonkers. Yeah. Well, I've switched over to Bluetooth headphones. I sent you the link. Um for the device that I bought on Amazon, and I'm not seeing any delay at all with the, the one that I'm using. Uh, uh, did you sent me a link? If I didn't, I'll send it Will again. Will you send it to me again? Yeah. Yeah. I, I switched just... to the Edematics. Oh, really? I got, yeah. I'm not using my Edematics except on the show, but this is the thing that I got yeah. for the uh, Bluetooth, but maybe there's another one that's better, you know. But yeah, this let, me see if I can, let me see if I can show you the one I'm using. The Edematics are a lot brighter than my Bose. Uh, oh, oh, it's a much better. It's a great sound. Yeah. But I, it's funny. Yeah. These $29 Bluetooth earphones I got. Oh, uh -huh. well, send me the uh, link to that, okay? Will you send me the link to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, can you say? I want it, too, because I want to stop using this big thing. Yeah, big yeah. Well, I, I love these Edematics, but uh, these, these earphones I bought for 29 bucks <laughs> have better sound. The yeah. Bluetooths. Yeah, they were really incredible. Well, I have uh, from my Bose. I have uh, I had custom made uh, ear uh, plugs, and I'm going to have them drilled and uh, have the edematics inserted in them, so that uh, you know you place this in your ear and there's nothing more comfortable. Yeah. Well, but, this is, I just use the spongy ones, the spongy things. The spongy and, is the yeah, best of the them, of, of the if, ones. It, it, well, if you haven't, I tried them once. It, I I just didn't feel that comfortable with them, but they're the ones. That you put in all the way in your ear, in the ear canal. Ear ones, yeah. the, the, the other ones that come with it. And yeah, there's two others. Just right, come. and they will close the ear up as well. You know, they're uh, they're pretty good. And Edemotics will make you specialty. Right. They 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 will sets. make you these. Uh, yeah. And all I'd have to do is send in the uh, the mold, but yeah, I tested it. it looks like this will. Yeah. And with that exciting piece of information, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we bring it to a close. I don't know where everybody was tonight, but it was a nice show. Just a nice bunch, a bunch of people just getting together and talking. Uh, Ray Renati, always uh, uh, glib as usual <laughs> and dashing, as well as, uh, you know, um, uh, Vernon Nunn, who has a rather dashing professorial look about him and of well, course you said I, you said I, you said the other night that i reminded you of uh Bolton. no you would be no you would be the movie version of john bolton. ah okay yeah you do look like the movie version of john bolton yeah. i googled it you, you don't do. look like you john do. bolton you look like the movie version of john bolton yeah the like tv I, movie and, and of course as always <laughs> phil meyer lewis black hey i'm <laughs> tony hat as well is, did Tony You're gonna get you your one? MacBook Mini, oh, Alex. I okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, well, do do me a favor and uh, be, do a nice big wave goodbye to the audience so they can. Uh, okay. Well, hopefully, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Bye bye. Thanks for a good show. That's it for the uh, citizens panel for tonight, folks. I'm gonna hang up on them and uh, say goodbye uh, to them. Uh, let me see here. Oops. How do I get rid of them? There we go. Wait a minute. Every now and then I forget how to do things. I, sometimes I don't even remember to keep breathing. Uh, one day I will forget completely. Anyway, listen, that's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. Coming up next is The Intersection with Jack and Amy. That will be followed by Connections at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And then tomorrow night at 8.30, we got the sports show, The Arena with the Franchise MC at 9.30. We got Damian Chaplin and The Intersection. And then at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, I'll be back with more of the same. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.